Hi, Kiara, Ingrid, and Clara, and Sophie. Holy smokes. Okay, I got to get going. Okay. Ingrid, check. Kiara, check. Sophie, check. Who else did I have? Clara, check. And Aaron, Corey, Inessa. There. You gotta go quick. You guys are coming fast and furious. Inessa, Alicia, and Stella. Stella. Inessa. Alicia. Good. And I got Cassidy, Malta, Alessandra. Malta. Cassidy. Alessandra. And I've got um, Isaiah, Isabella, and Lauren. Isaiah, Isabella, and Lauren. Good. Keep coming, folks. Aslan, Liam, and Kai. Aslan, Liam, and Kai. I've got Matthias, Aaron, I got you, and Zach, and Alessia. Matthias, Alessia, and Zach. Good. I've got Felix, Avram, and Charlotte. Good. Oh, I'm almost through with you, all of you. Okay, I got Cena, Ethan, Avram, I got good. So Cena, and there's good. And I've got Timothy, and I got Paul. Good. I got Liam and do I have Tim Hartling? Do I have Allie? Do I have Julius? Do I have Linus? Do I have Amelie or Michael? Do I have Leo or Corsine? Do I have Isaac? Yes, I got some of you. Okay, I got Timothy, good. Tim Hartling, I got gotcha. Um. I don't know who that is. Gabriela Peradone. I, I need to have your given name. Anton, I gotcha. Somewhere. Where's my Anton? There he is. Oh, Alessio. Okay, I gotcha. Gotcha already. Thank you. Okay, do I have Leo, Corsine, Isaac, Jack, Devante, Ayala, or Hannah? Any of you are there, let me know. The others I asked for already. So I got most of nine F today, except for Allie and Julius and Linus, Amelie and Michael, but I'm missing a fair number of nine E. Okay, let's see if any others show up. Okay, that's fine. So my people, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you. So your assignment due, I think, at the end of the week is this, and it's a bunch of line and condensed drawings. I assume the structural drawings, the first column, probably went pretty well. Um, good. There's a couple more. All right. So I got, uh, I got Michael and Leo. 
Thanks for checking in. Do you have something you want to ask about, folks? Do you have any questions on this sheet? That's my first priority before we do some new stuff on IMFs later this hour. So if you do, okay, Linus and Isaac, I'll get you in a second. If you do, look over and see, and don't just give me a number. Tell me what you'd like, the line, condensed, or the structural formula, probably line or condensed, I'm guessing, for most of you. Or is it the name that's tripping you up? Okay, so let me know. And I see one question already. Let me write down Linus and Isaac. So, Isaac, I got you. Linus, I've got you. Okay, good. Everything was okay, okay. And I got from Charlotte, number 14. Okay, so 14, I'm looking at it second to the last. Um, any particular part that you want on 14? And maybe the structural, okay, uh, the name. Okay, so let's work on the name. Okay, here we go, so 14. We'll work on the name and let's see what we are given for 14. Okay, we almost got to draw the thing, don't we? So here we go, let's draw it and then we can count stuff up, okay? All right, so everybody look at 14. We've got a C. And we got an OH attached. And then we've got BR2, which means I got a BR probably above and a BR below. I'm just walking my way across. So I got a C with an H. And then right after that, I got an F. So the F must be going down, okay? Okay, COH, BR2, CHF. And now I got CH2. I got four of those. So CH2, 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 CH2. And then I got another CH2. I don't know why they did that. And a CH3. Ute, okay, so good. I'll get your other questions if I can in just a moment. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, um, I got so many questions. I'm kind of running out of room here. I'll try and finish this one first. So this is, let's go for the name here. So it's got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is what, an octane? Then we gotta tell where some branches are. We got a lot of branches, right? So we got a one hydroxyl. That's the OH, isn't it? So one hydroxyl. I gotta put some of these down below. I don't have enough room. Then I've got a two comma two dibromo. Comma, then I've got a three fluoro. Octane. I think that's it. Maybe that checks with somebody else there. Somebody agrees. Corsine is here. Good. Thanks for checking in, Corsine. Anyone else, if you haven't said hi, you've got to do that. Still looking for Jack, for Devante, for Ayala. For Hana, still looking for Allie, Julius, and Amelie. Julius is here. Got you, Julius. Looking to see if anyone else joined us and said hello. Okay. Charlotte, I hoped, I think it was you that asked for that. Does that help with this? So one hydroxyl, two, two, dibromo, three fluoro octane for number 14. And let me go to another question. I missed some of Aaron's question. I'm sorry, I can't see the rest of it, Aaron. Can you explain? Wow, we're coming so quick. Okay, Jack is here. 
Thank you, Jack. Number four. Okay, let's look at number four. All right, I'm going to raise this. By the way, I got cut off earlier with my Wi-Fi, so if I get cut off, just hang out. I'll come back, okay? Good, number four. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to write the name. So six iodo four methyl two thick kind. And for number four, people that want a number four, um, there's Aaron again. Number four, what would the complete structure formula look like? Okay, Aaron, let's do the structure then. So we've got DECA, right? That's 10, isn't it, everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I got a two decine. YNE was what sort of ending? YNE means there's a hmm bond. What was YNE, especially nine E people, because I'm not sure if we got to that. Let's see if you know. There you go, triple bond, good. Triple bond on the second bond, so that becomes a triple. Now let's go to the next thing, four methyl. We all know how to do that, one, two, three, four. There's a methyl. Now we gotta go to six, and six is iodo. One, two, three, four, five, six is an I, iodine. Iodo is the prefix for that. And I think that's it, isn't it? Anything else on there that I missed? Let me look at number four. Nope, that's it. And then let's fill them with H's, right? None there, none there. There's one, two, one, two, 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 three, I think. Yeah? Hope that was helpful on number four. Let me see what other questions you've got. We had a lot of answers. That's good. And good. Thanks for participating, everybody. I appreciate it. A lot of your comments are correct. Uh, it's hard for me to go back and forth. There were so many people writing, but now I see um, maybe number. Could we do five? What part of five do you want to see? Okay, let's do Ingrid's suggestion. The line formula for seven. So seven. The line formula. Okay, seven. All right. Okay, so here we go. Seven's got only two carbons. So you know what? The line formula is really short. I got a C and a C, right? And on the first one, I've got, oh, wait a minute, I got something else too. That line better be a double bond. So I got to kind of double it up like this. I think, because that's a, that's a type of ethene, isn't it? And then I got three BRs, holy smoke. So I got one here. And I got two on the other side. So Ingrid, I think it's something like that. And I don't have to put the H on this side because we don't have to do that with the line drawing. We assume it's there. I hope that was helpful. Okay, so there you go, Ingrid. You can check it out and see if you got it. Allie is here. Thank you for checking in. And Avram says iodine. So that was from a problem a ways back. Okay, Allie is here. Good, still looking for Devante, looking for Ayala, looking for Hana, and looking for Amelie. Let's see if many of those people checked in. No, they did not. Let's see if there's another one we'd like to do. You're welcome, Ingrid. Okay, good. Um, how about, somebody mentioned number five. Is there any particular part of number five we'd like to see?
I'm going to give you the name while you think about what you want to see out of five. It says four, four, dibromo, one, two, whoops, sorry, buta, buten, di, all. Oh. Whoa, okay, so. Um, let's see. So for number five, was there a specific part we wanted to see? The complete structural formula, it says Timothy. Okay, Timothy, let's do the structural formula. Okay, we got buta, gang. Buta was how many C's? Type in for me. How many C's? Corey, I don't need comments like that. There you go. Otherwise, I erase you for the rest of the hour. So please don't do it. Thank you. Okay, so how many C's do we have, folks? Buta, what's that mean? Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, others. So I got four. One, two, three, four. The OL ending means I've got what? What makes an OL ending from last time we met? Good. Thanks for all your participation. I'm getting all your responses now, and they're all correct. That's right, four. OL means I've got a what attached somewhere. What's the OL mean? And die means I've got two of them. And there's Corey. Thank you, Corey. I like that participation. Good. And Allie has it too. So it's an OH. And I've got two of them. Now let's see where they are. Well, one's at one. And one's at two. I can put another line between the O and the H if you want. It doesn't really matter here. That's this part, and now let's go to what? Bromo, we gotta go to four, and I got dibromo, so one, two, three, four. I got a BR for bromo, and I got another one. And now I gotta fill in with some H's. And that, I believe, my folks, I think that's it. That two's not a part of it there. So it looked like that. Timothy and others, I hope that helped you out. Thanks for participating. And I see, yes, yeah, several of you had comments on where to put things. And you were right, Kiara, and right, Charlotte. That's right. Good. And Leo as well. Good. A lot of you knew where to put those BRs. Appreciate it. Any other ones you'd like to ask about? And what would you like to see? If you're okay with the rest, that's fine. But I'll see if there's, okay. Why are there both OHs on one? There's not. There's one on one. Whoops, because I screwed up. That's why. Thank you, Kiara. It should be one and two. Kiara, good catch. Extra points for her. She saw my mistake. Thank you, Kiara. Appreciate it. So one and two are where my OHs are, my hydroxides. That's what those are called, remember? We had those when we talked about and for here, we call them hydroxyl branches, just like we did methyl branches. Now it's a hydroxyl branch. So two of those, right? Beautiful. Let's see if there's any others. You're welcome. That, uh, that we should have. Good. I think then we're good. We good on the other ones, folks? Did they go okay? If they did, I'm going to race and we'll start some new stuff and continue it next week. Can you explain the condensed formula? Liam, for which one? Condensed formula for which one? For number five or for another one? I'm not getting it 100, 100% maybe. Okay, Liam, which, which one you want a condensed formula on? Any, okay. Let's do this one. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to race here, and let's do the condensed formula for this one right here. Just walk across it and see what you got. Okay, so I got a first one. I got a C, Liam, with two H's, so CH2. And then I got an OH coming off that sucker. So I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's all one thing in this branch coming off. Then I got another C, and that C has an H. So CH, 
And then I've got a branch coming off that's an OH. So I'm going to put another OH. And then, Liam, just keep walking across it. The next one, I got a C with two H's, so CH2. The next one, I got a C with one H. And then I got two BRs coming off, so that we can combine and call it BR2. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, that's most of you. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah, good. It's a couple of you typed it in. You're a quick typist. Alexandra and uh, Charlotte. Yes, you just got to remember the BR2. Seth, so you got it right. Good. Okay. Did that help, Liam? Just walk across the molecule and write what you see. Good. I'm glad. Super. Okay, good. All right, good. Then, why don't we just write OH4? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, you mean CH4? Not sure, Alessia, what you mean about that question. I'll leave that up. Um, in the meantime, we're going to start with something new. If we're more or less done with questions. Okay. OH2. Uh, because they, they weren't both on the same C, that's why. One was on the first C. And the next one, Alessia was on the next carbon. So we got to separate them. That's how you do it when you're walking across the molecule. Got to walk across and, oh, first C1, second C1, and I got to separate them that way. Okay, ready? Here we go. IMFs. This stands for intermolecular. Forces. I don't know if they abbreviate like that in German. So I'll call it IMF because that's what I'm used to, but it is intermolecular. Okay. Uh, I don't know who you are, but I'm about to get rid of you. Bye. Okay, so intermolecular forces. What I want you to know or think about before we before we do this is, Jack, anything else? And I eliminate you for the rest of the hour and your points as well. Okay? Okay, recall. We had three types of intra- molecular forces. I know we didn't call it that, but intra means inside molecular forces. These are bonds. And they're what? Between atoms, right? Okay, what were the three types of bonds that we studied this year? So if you know even one of them, type it in. I need, what are the types of bonds? You'll see why I'm asking this. We're gonna come back to this in a second. What are the three types of bonds? Single, double, triple? No, those are all one type of bond. They just, single, double, or triple tells you, Kara, how many, uh, how many electrons, or Alessandro, how many electrons? So instead, we got molecular is not a type of bond, but some of you got it. Singular, no. Single is not really a type of bond. Covalent, now that's the type of bond. So I can have single, double, or triple covalent bonds. We've used a lot of those in organic chemistry, right? Yeah, good. A lot of you got that. Now, I see another one from Stella. She remembers that we also studied ionic bonds between ions. Okay, good. 
We had a third type as well, and let's see if somebody knows it. I'm scanning over your answers. Nobody has it yet. It's not molecular. Molecular solids have covalent bonds. We already got that one. Yeah, what is the third? Okay, the third one is metallic. And that's between metal atoms. Okay, what I want you to know is that What I want you to know is that all three of these, covalent, ionic, and uh, metallic, these are all between atoms. So they're within a molecule, okay? They're just attaching the atoms to other atoms, just like we have this happening. That's a molecular, that's a uh, intramolecular force or a bond, and it's a covalent bond. Yes, yeah, a single one, but that is between atoms. Now, all of these, all of these bonds are stronger. Stronger than the new stuff we're going to learn. They're stronger than the intermolecular forces. Okay, so you might say, well, what do we care then if they're, Devante's there very well. I will write him off, although he's pretty darn late. So we're not going to give him all the points because we need to be here on time, everybody. Okay, so um, why are we interested in intermolecular forces? Well, they're huge in the 10th grade biology and chemistry. Why? Because they involve a lot of the human body and a lot of the chemistry of things that go into us like uh, DNA and fats and carbohydrates and stuff like that. How things get around our system. It all involves these forces. So we're not breaking up bonds, okay? We're not breaking up bonds between atoms. Instead, we're doing something new. So we're going to look starting today at the types of intermolecular forces, right? Are those the forces that try to break the bonds? No. So if I've got a chunk of metal, remember how we said a chunk of metal was one molecule? So if I break this piece of metal, I'm breaking the metallic bonds. That's not an intermolecular force. I'm breaking the bonds within the molecule. That's not what we're talking about up here. If I take a salt crystal and break it in two, I'm breaking the ionic bonds. That's not what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about between molecules. Okay. And bye-bye. Okay. Let's go ahead and start to look at them. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of unpleasant, unwanted people commenting here. So, okay. There's several types of, of intermolecular forces. First one we're going to talk about are called um, London dispersion forces. But I got to give you the German name too, because German name often means that. Uh, sorry, the German name is often used if you take the rest of the classes uh, in. 11th, 12th grade in German, and it used to be used by uh, English speakers as well. The German name, it's called van der Waal. Van der Waal. Van der Waal forces. So 
It's not because they're from London, but a fellow named London studied these forces, as did a fellow from the Netherlands called Van der Waal. Okay, so it's two different people that studied them. Let's show you a molecule that has them so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Yes, dissolving sugar would definitely break those forces. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, hang with me, Ethan. We'll try and unconfuse you. Let's do an example. Let's take a CH4. And another one next to it. So draw two next to each other. Should look like that. Now, here's what happens sometimes. Although you and I show that the electrons are stuck in these bonds, in reality, the electrons are little objects that they can keep moving, okay? So just by luck, just by luck, let's say the electrons for this one were a little over on this side. So just for a moment, they're kind of flying around the carbon. Let's say there's more over here for just a moment. I'm going to sketch them in just like a millisecond, okay? Just for a moment because they're in motion. Well, just for that moment, this side of the molecule will have more of what type of charge? Positive, no, no. These are electrons. What kind of charge do electrons have? What's going to be over there? You got it. So negative charge. So what that means is I've got a little more negative charge on this side. And what that means is the other side must have a little more positive charge. That is called, ready? It's called a temporary dipole. So a temporary dipole is just that. It's when, by luck, a few electrons spend a little more of their time just for a minute or a millisecond on one side of the molecule as opposed to the other. So for that moment, there's two poles, a positive and a negative pole. So it's when electrons are gathered more at one end for a moment. Okay, so let's say we've got this happening here, all right, in this molecule. So we say this molecule has a dipole. Di means two, two poles. Like the Earth has a north and south magnetic pole, this molecule has a negative and positive electrical pole, okay? Negative on this where the electrons are, positive over here. Let's just say by luck, at the same moment, the next molecule over does the same thing, but kind of in reverse. So the electrons just for that moment are over here a little more. And so that side's more negative. And this side's more positive then because it's missing the electrons. Well, just for that little millisecond, how's this pole going to feel towards this one in the next molecule over? What are they going to do? They're going to attract exactly right. And that attraction is called a London dispersion force. I'm going to show that with just a little bitty dash like this. So that's my London dispersion force.
So here we go. Draw a little dashed line between them. Oh man, it looks like a solid line. I don't want it to be solid. I want it to be dashed. Okay, a little dashed line in between them. Now, notice I didn't want to make it solid because a solid line would be a bond. It's not a bond. It's more like this. These guys are attracted, but they're not glued to each other, okay? But they're attracted together. Positive towards negative, negative towards positive. Like two magnets, okay? Except instead of magnetic, it's electrical charges that are pulling them together. Okay. At room temperature, methane is a gas. You guys know that. So it turns out in this particular molecule of a bunch of CH4s, the attraction between them, the London dispersion forces right there, are pretty weak. Does that mean these London dispersion forces are always weak? No. And I'm going to talk to you now. Yeah, we still got a few minutes. I'm going to talk to you now about when they would be stronger. Okay? All right. So I'm going to pause now. Any questions here about what I drew with the two methanes? So temporarily, they have a little pull towards each other. They're not bonding. They're just attracted a little bit to each other. So it's a type of, it's a type of attraction. It's not a bond. Attraction, not bond. Bond is something like permanent. Okay? What do they do when they attract? Oh, they get a little closer together. That's all they do, Kiara. Now, ultimately, if they really attract, well, let's see what happens in our next example. If they attract more, okay? Then we can talk about what that means. Okay. I want to talk for my next example about a molecule that you guys had in lab, okay? Both classes. And it was hexane. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a couple of hexanes, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. And now one, two, three, well, let's draw it over this way, just to make it clear. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll put all the H's on here as I should. Okay. Same, same game, same, same game. This time, I got a bunch of C's, right, and a bunch of H's. Do I have more or less electrons available in the molecule? More or less than methane? <clears throat> Easy answer, right? Do I have more or less electrons available here compared to, compared to methane? Thank you, Devante. So because I got more, it's more likely that I'll have a bunch of them over here. And that makes this side even more negative and the other side even more positive. All right. Again, it's just luck. The next millisecond, that could disappear. Maybe it'll be on the other side or maybe nothing at all. These electrons are in constant motion. But let's just say at this little snapshot, the exact same thing happens here. I get a positive charge on this side and I get a lot of electrons over here. And this side's more negative. Okay, so this time, I'm going to mark the London dispersion forces again. So obviously, I've got some between these two molecules. I'm going to call this L, well, I'm going to say London dispersion forces, okay? London DF. But here, they're stronger. Why? Because I got more electrons available. So if more electrons in the molecules, and I mean like the different hexane molecules, I drew two, but there's of course a million and zillion of them in a beaker of hexanes. So if there's more electrons in the molecules, 
than the London dispersion forces. I'm going to abbreviate that DF are stronger. So Kiara asks, how does it affect things? Well, now it really does matter. What's the difference between the phase of matter with methane versus hexane? You saw hexane in the lab. What sort of phase of matter is it? Exactly, Leo, exactly. More electrons, we say a greater electron cloud. That's how they say it in the chemistry business. The stronger the, the London dispersion forces. Okay, so what do you know about the phase of matter? Hexane is a what? It's a liquid. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Felix. Why is it a liquid? Because now the forces are strong enough between these two and all the other ones to do what? To make them attract together and become a liquid instead of a gas. Uh-huh, okay, so, so here, well, here, here, the LDF, London Dispersion Forces, are strong enough Whoops, strong enough to make the hexane molecules molecules join and form a liquid. Sorry, I'm running out of board space. That is really important. So these things really do matter. What happens when there's a branch? When there's a branch, there tends to be even more electrons. And so there's even more likelihood, Devante, that there's going to be these uh, intermolecular forces. So branches are going to make it happen more. Aqueous is not a state of matter. That's right. Yeah, so we're talking about solid liquid gas. Okay. Okay, so these guys become a liquid. Methane, the London dispersion forces are weak. They don't really have enough to join together to make a gas. Okay, what about, do I have a minute yet? I got two minutes, just enough. We had this stuff on the board in both classes. C25H52. It's a really big hydrocarbon. And it's in, is in candle wax. But that's not a gas. That's not a liquid. That's a solid. Why? Well, look how big the molecule is. Will the London dispersion forces be stronger, weaker between the molecules of the wax? Let me say that again. Will the London dispersion forces be stronger, weaker between the molecules of the wax? Look how big that sucker is. So much stronger uh, temporary dipoles. And let's see if somebody guessing. Liam did, as did Felix and Corsine. And you got it stronger. London dispersion forces. The size of these things matters. The more electrons, what we say is the bigger the electron cloud, the stronger the London dispersion forces, and the more they come together. Again, they're not bonding, but they're joining to become either a, either a liquid like hexane, or they're becoming a solid like, uh, like this molecule, C25H52, the stuff in candle wax. Whoa, we made it.
Any last questions before we call it good? Then that's probably about it. And so finish up your sheets, upload them into Google Classroom for me, and I'll grade them, and then we'll start off next week. I will not meet again with 9E or 9F this week. Thanks, 9E, for joining at 9F's times. And what are we going to do about our test? Well, we're probably not going to have our test because I can't have you in the classroom. So instead, we'll have just other assignments that we do here online and that uh, you can upload and I'll grade those. So we will not have a quiz until probably next semester in physics. Sorry about that. But we're going to be doing this sort of thing the next couple of weeks until, I think, winter break. Any other questions from you? Your brother's having a test. I don't know how they're doing that. I don't really want to do an online test. I think the tests are indeed pretty much canceled unless you already took one. Like my nine, one of you guys took it already. I can't remember who, but I graded that one and I'll get it back to you someday. When do we come back to school? I don't know, Liam. I think the earliest we're coming back to school with luck is after winter break, but I don't know. They're still deciding. Let's see what other questions you have. When do we start physics? After break, after winter break. Then we'll be in ninth grade physics. We'll be home until the end of January. That's right, Paul. Any other things I can answer? When do we start physics? Yep, after, after break. And for number seven, Tim, Timothy, why don't you just uh, email me? But we already talked about that one. Yeah, crazy, huh? Okay, everybody stay healthy. Thanks for all your participation. I really appreciate it. And I'll try and pause next week with both 9E and 9E and F and see what questions or problems you have about your schoolwork in general, okay? Because I like both you guys and I want to make sure you're feeling okay about this weird thing of being at home again. But probably we'll get through it together, right? Through all of January. Hope you stay well. Bye-bye.